In this episode, the two business guys mastermind on how you can thrive in uncertainty. Enjoy. This business podcast, the two business guys mastermind uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup, operational, and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. So, hey, Rob, man, uh, so glad you're here, brother. Everybody, this is the Two Business Guys, and we're masterminding today on something I heard recently. And Rob, one of the things I heard, the guy said, for your business, he says, you're probably on the right track. Probably. Mm -hmm. He says, you're just not doing enough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And everything comes, you know, and I've been fascinated by, you know, this, this, the success that I see that with people that just work like crazy. Yeah, but I'm, I know. you know, I'm going yeah, to push back against that narrative. Y'all, so. I'm going to push back against that narrative for two reasons. First reason is this. Everybody that pushes that hustle hard narrative compares themselves downward. So what do I mean by that? Please explain. The people that they talk about a hustle hard narrative are never comparing themselves to people that work harder than them. They see their success because they look at people that work less than them and they compare themselves to people that work less than them that are less successful than them. Right. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, and, I, I think... and, and, and I will give you as the counterpoint, Tim Ferriss's best selling book, the yeah. four hour work week. Yeah. I, will argue with you that Tim Ferriss works much less than most of the hustle hard gurus and makes similar bank. Uh, You know what? I kind of, I read the book. I loved it. It it started a revolution, but man, I, you know, and then I followed a guy that guy works hard, but see, that's the key. What is your definition? We got to start from a baseline. What is your definition of working hard? Because most people that work jobs work 40 to 50 hours a week. He puts in, okay, that's that's a very good distinction. And and if you guys are listening to this, you know, really jump into what we're talking about, lean in. There's that he puts in what seems to be a tremendous amount of output based on all the things that he has going. That's the key. Output. I don't see him over there. Output sweating his is not a off. function of input. Good point. As a matter of fact, working smarter, the whole point is that your output increases exponentially from the same level or even a smaller level of input. What a good point. And and you know, I was I mean, there's always those kind of points. I was thinking about Sam Bankman Freed, right? Who's got uh <laughs> FTX. And they talk about, and I I actually have been doing a couple of things just in my own life. I was thinking, you know, when I was 26, I just worked a lot. Mm -hmm. And I can just recall at 26, just being very, very happy with the output I was putting out. Mm -hmm. And, And then when I got, you know, 30, I know I look 30 now, but yeah. <laughs> When I got 30, I was like, my gosh, I I really appreciated the work that I put in at 26 because I just got stuff. Man, it was like 55 to 60 hours at, at, at a job. It was uh, going to school, full, not full time, but just about full time. I think I was taking about 15. Um, yeah, you know, 12 yeah, hours full time. 15 contact hours. <laughs> right? And uh, I think I had, you know, a couple of girlfriends at the time, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and I, I just and I, I thought about that. And I literally this was yesterday I was playing basketball and I was thinking, man, you know what, what would happen if you just put that same kind of output, that same kind of output. As you did when you were, you know, 26 years old. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Just put it in. Right. right? right. Just, just got rid of all the excuses. You know, you know, mm-hmm. you flip on your little bean bag in, in, in your office and you just put that kind of work to it. What do you what think would happen? happen? Oh, I'd be tired. Mm-hmm. What else do you think would happen? I, I, you know, I might, uh, I, I think I might be on the brink of divorce. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 this is what I was thinking. This is what I was mm-hmm. thinking. If I did those things with the life I have now, now listen, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, <laughs> if you did those things with the life you have now, right? And you might be 26 and you go, ah, that's my life. <laughs> then just go do that, right? There is going to be an outcome. Mm-hmm. It is going to be an outcome. And then, so I started thinking, of course, Rob, I started thinking, well, what can I do? I started gamifying it. You know, mm-hmm. what would that look like? Okay. So then I came up with, again, going back to my, well, you know, I used to, of course, I used to get up at 3.30 in the morning. I was mm-hmm. at work by 4.15. I worked until like, I don't know, maybe five at the job. I do kind of recall falling asleep at a couple of red lights. <laughs> exactly. Now, here's the thing I want you to think about. And this is a story <clears throat> that I first heard or I first saw re it's a story that's it's been out there but i first saw it in gino whitman's book traction i first saw it and he was a, he was doing well, a retelling he was doing a retelling of somebody else telling the story but this is the story that is 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 kind of the 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 the, the thought puzzle that i like to give out all the 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 the, 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 the grind the, the grind gang right the hustle hard um mindset people <clears throat> the sun puts out trillions of kilowatts of energy every day. I'll say that one more time. Yeah, I've heard this one before. Y'all. The sun puts out trillions. Trillions. With a T. Nine zeros. No, 12 zeros. Right? The sun puts out trillions of kilowatts. So, so if you really think about that, that's quadrillions of watts, just so we're clear. Right? For all of y'all that don't know the, the math conversion. He's doing that, right? that, that public math. <laughs> Quadrillions of watts, trillions of kilowatts of energy every day. Mm-hmm. However, with all of that output, if you put a rod of iron out on the street and left it out there for an hour, the sun could not cut through that rod of iron. Yeah, I know for you're all going of that, that output. If you left it out there for two hours, it still wouldn't be cut through. If you left it out there for a day, it still wouldn't be cut through. And we are thankful for this because all of us that own cars, otherwise your car will get cut in half every day while sitting out in the sun, right? So we we are thankful for the fact that the sun cannot do this thing, but realize that it is not a function of the, the output of the sun, whether it can do the actual thing. However, here's the interesting thing. A laser... Uh, it's the focus talk, y'all. With a couple of hundreds of watts, not kilowatts, not a thousand, not a quadrillion. Hundreds of watts can cut through an iron bar, can cut through a steel plate, can cut through a whole bunch of stuff in a matter of seconds. So focus, focus work, not not focused energy is more powerful than abundant energy. That is dispersed. Oh, I, love, I love that. Hey, I lo- hey, look, you know, everybody, I don't even know where you were going with this. Rob, what, Rob <laughs> I just, you know, have been feeling the way, man. And, and I, and I, and I look at, I look at the, um, what's on the horizon in terms of, mm. of, um, the economy. And I just go, man, this is the, this is not the time to, to be miss. resting. On your laurels, if you've heard her that, and time, I don't disagree right? with you there. I think that point that you're making, and because I, I push back, but I want to be, I want to be honest. <clears throat> I sit in that space. I worry about that thing as well. I sit there and I wonder about, you know, how do we take advantage of what we see? How do you take advantage of opportunities? And the reason that I push back against the hustle hard narrative is because you know my background. You know what I've done. You know what I've put in. Here's the thing that I will tell you: I had 11 different jobs and, and positions including running a company, coaching basketball, running, um, the, being a school improvement team coordinator, being a teacher. Be, right? I had 11 responsibilities. Yeah, you're busy. Right? Now, here's the thing that I want you to pay attention to. With all of that stuff that I was doing, I make more money in five days doing what I do now 
than I made the entire year doing what I did then. Mm. That's the whole point, right? Even with this business, I was doing a lot of low budget stuff and not, and so it was high volume, which is more work. It's more work to sell it, to market it. It's more work to sell it. It's more work to fulfill it. And then when I started realizing, wait a minute, here's where my money, here's where the, the, the vein of gold is, if you would. Here's where our, 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 our profit centers are. And I focused on those profit centers. I'm about to do more in one deal right now, coming up in one deal than I did in the entire first year that I was in business. See now, and that that part right there, I think we're constantly, you know, dipping a toe in that idea of hard brings more, right? And now, now to that point, oh, and you know, I'm a software guy, right? I love software, mm-hmm. and I was using some software to, and this is cool stuff, right? So, I I got this software, man, that. I can plan out my ads. I can plan out my post for a whole year in one day. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Smarter. Right? So as I started smarter. thinking about, uh, you know, Gary V, and I started thinking about Alice Hormozy, and I started thinking about Grant Cardone, and I started thinking about these heavyweights that, of of social media and how much they post and how much they put out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, well, you know, Alex. And Gary, they actually have like the same guy. I didn't know that. Well, you know, not now. That's when it, graduated. It, it, same person that it. took their material and in that and session it chopped it up 80, 88 different ways. So mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like, Alex is everywhere. And you're mm-hmm. like, Why is, how did they do that? Happening? And that's the key. And then that he, right he, there that you're talking must, about. Yeah. He says, is, oh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't do it all. And here's and Gary the, does a lot of his own posting and stuff like that. But yeah, and this is the reason I why I push so hard against the hustle hard mentality from the outside. Right. And you look at this in mastery and anything. The amateur can't see what the master's actually doing. It doesn't look like the master is doing things. It looks like the master is actually doing stuff that the master isn't doing. Right. From looks the so outside. Easy. Yeah. And not even so much looks so easy, but it looks like they're they're stressing this thing over here, or because you're seeing the after effects of something that they did already. We are when we watch people that are successful, we're seeing it through the paradigm of not having done what they've done. It's just like when you watch those magician shows, right? And it's like the decoding of the magician, mm-hmm. and you see it, and it's like, oh. Yeah, that makes perfect sense that it was that. And it was way easier than the 15 different ways that I was trying to 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 write the, the, any of the any of the different tricks. If you're trying to, you know, put a put a a, a, a ball in a in a, a water bottle or water, rest, that type of stuff. It's like, oh, they cut a hole in it and then they had it here and they covered it. And so then they just popped it and it's an illusion and it's easy or they cut a hole in the tops that you can't see. So when they yeah. slap it, it's just sliding it into the slot. So it's not yeah. actually you don't have to push real hard. You don't have to do all this other stuff. It's just that simple. And you see how much easier it is once you get it from the vantage point of someone who actually knows how to do it. We are constantly trying to, re- it's, it's easier to engineer than to reverse engineer. And we are constantly trying to reverse engineer. And our default mechanism says, I'm not enough. I need to do more. Work harder. Exactly. But that do comes more. from a or, negative. Uh, so you're t- Self-talk. Are you saying then say that, say it like that? Okay, because I've been really kind of getting on some entrepreneurs lately, man. Mm-hmm. It, really, just like do more, do mm-hmm. more, do more. Right. Your business right. is asking you to do more. Yeah, but here's the thing. And, and, and again, I like, mean, so I should be saying work smarter, work smarter. You should always be. Because like, here's, here's the reality. Your brain is set up to do more. But your brain is set up to do more of the things that actually bring results your brain is not set up to do more of the stuff that doesn't bring results and so often if we don't have the proper lens through which to see things and to see gains to see rewards then certain parts of the drudgery that are necessary feel like they are pointless and when they feel like they're pointless here's how your brain works The habit loop works just as follows. You have a trigger, some sort of idea, some sort of thought. I'm going to double down on this. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, this is the key that because remember, like it I am a I am a hyper achiever. I am a work, I, I'm, I'm a constant worker, Say right? That. Say right. That. Say that. It seems pointless. And what happens is your brain will actually make it harder to do subconsciously not consciously you're not intentionally not trying to do this work your mm -hmm. brain will actually say no 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 no, we're not going to spend energy doing that because your brain is on survival your brain recognizes there's a finite amount of energy that you have every day there's a finite amount of time that you have every day and your brain's job evolutionarily created is to help us figure out how to get the most out of that day according to what is important to us and so when you do something, for example, if you do social media posting. How to get the most out of the day. Right? If you do social media posting and you get three likes <laughs> and two likes. You're like, this is like, some BS. You're like, and you do this for like a month, right? If you don't recognize that it takes six months to do it, and so every one of those days is pushing towards your six months, then you don't have the proper frame of reference to go six months in that thing. This is this goes back to mm -hmm. Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers, right? When If you know that it takes 10,000 hours, then each hour is a notch down on your 10,000 hour counter. Mm. You're not even tracking to see whether you're good or not until you're at hour 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. For the first 5,000 hours, you're just knocking off hours because you know that is so important. That is so important right now because – you know, you see some things and you go, oh, man, I'm not getting the kind of run. But then then you say, but I got all this content produced. And you go, oh, man, you know, there's not a lot of people, you know, watching or it's not a lot of people listening. You know, mm -hmm. where are they at? Mm -hmm. And and you, you get ready to quit. But you don't realize that that is the building of the muscle. Right. That is the getting in the shape. That is the reps. That is that is honing of the craft. Mm hmm. But you're not seeing the kind of result. It's something Gary V said on on a podcast quite re quite recently. He says, "I don't do it for to get the money." He said, "I do it to do it." Mm -hmm. And I thought, "Oh, that's so brilliant!" Because if I looked at the return, hey, I'm doing this. I'm supposed to get a return. Now you have an expectation. Mm -hmm. But if you do it from what you have done. Mm -hmm. so much could get done he didn't say that part I, that was mine i like that so much can get done so and i was telling somebody recently gosh man i wouldn't i wouldn't even apply my own words i says just do it mm -hmm. i says and once you're done with it i'll show you all the stuff that can be done because you did it and what and, and it this was is writing what I'm a pushing, book and this is what i'm pushing back against you on <clears throat> that sounds great on a nike ad but your subconscious will say, nah, we good. Right. Because just do it says have faith. Just do it says you don't need to know. Just we, do we it have is one of the most. For that. Exactly. Faith is one of the most difficult things to do because faith is inherently embracing the unknown mm. for an unsure reward. Your brain hates uncertainty. Mm. Right. And so when we're teaching people, when we're training people, one of the worst things that this is, this is the whole point of the hustle hard mentality. Why, why I don't like it. the hustle hard mentality is really saying, I don't know how I made it. I just worked. I just know that I worked hard. Well, thank you. I'm working hard, too, and I'm not making it. So obviously that's not the difference between us. So it's OK that you don't know what the difference between us is. But please don't impugn the fact that I'm just not working hard enough. Ooh, that's good. All right. Yeah. That 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 that's an ego move that a lot of people do. And, 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 you know, again, going from the teaching perspective. Right. Most of the people that are really good at something suck at teaching it. Yeah. Because right. what you, what's, what's going on? You get up at four in the morning and you 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 right. Do right. baskets right. till eight. And by the mm -hmm. time you shot baskets for eight hours, you've built up a muscle memory so that when you get in the game, it's easy. Exactly. Now, here's the interesting thing. They don't suck at it because they don't like people. They don't suck at they suck at it because they have not they've been so far removed from sucking at the thing that they have lost touch with what that feels like. There is a period there's a period of time in your in your trajectory to growing to mastery at anything where you go from being a novice to being an adept to being a master. Right. Mm, that's good stuff, man. And the further away that you get from being a novice, the less empathy, the less 
the less that you can remember about what it was actually like to be in that position. I remember when I was when, when I was training to be a jujitsu instructor, one of the things the Gracies taught us was the fact that it's actually it's harder to be a black belt instructor of beginners than it is to be a blue belt instructor of beginners because mm -hmm. as a black belt you were a beginner 10 or more years ago mm -hmm. so much of your worldview so much of your life has been lived through the lens of being good at this thing that you can't even remember truly what it was like to not be good at it what the emotions were what the self-talk was what all the rest of that because it's been filtered through time and through nostalgia and through memory of those things and you've been judging yourself for those failures that you had when you were a, a, a novice yeah, for so, so long that you have lost the ability to empathize with that novice because you have judged you as that novice from the perspective of all of these things are holding me back from my ultimate ultimate goal whereas yeah. the blue belt who That's just so got who just was a novice just a little bit ago fully understands and remembers what it was like to be a novice what y'all think what y'all think i mean hey you know if you're brand new and you just jumping into this like what are these dudes talking about right <laughs> i don't even know if we got into our topics but these are the kind of things that as an entrepreneur you're going through on a pretty consistent yes and constant basis am i working hard enough you know why are they having success and i am not and yes. all this different stuff, right? Uh, and you know, Rob, you know, I I can take some stuff to the extreme, right? I, I had my I had a a, a floor covering in my home office, <laughs> and I and it was three thirty this morning, no four four thirty this morning, and I says I'm not going to bed. Mm. I'm just going to fall asleep. Why? Because mm. that's what I heard Mr. Beast does. <laughs> he said, Mr. Beast says he says I just work until I burn out. Yeah, and then and then they. The guys were looking at him like they're like, "How old are you?" Twenty-four. Exactly. He's been now. Now he's been a YouTuber since he was twelve. Mm -hmm. So he's got his reps in. Exactly. Y'all hearing this? That's he, the whole yeah, He's key. the highest. Go look at what he did when he was twelve. Look at right. what he did when he was thirteen. That's it where you terrible. are. Terrible. It was garbage. Right? He even we, looks at. He said, "I can't look at him." Exactly, because we do these snapshots where we compare ourselves to somebody that's ten years plus in the game, right? And they look like they're working hard. Right. And a lot of times they'll say, I'm one of the hardest working people. In I'm da -da -da. No, you're one of the most aligned people so that all of your day is focused in the same direction. Ah, you're doing yeah. the same amount of work that everybody else is doing. You're doing you just call everything in your life work instead of the one thing that is that is your work. Whereas most people have their family work, their work work, their their social work, their individual work. Whereas the pe those of us that have gotten to the point where we are actually being successful in this thing, have figured out how to align all of those. Your family supports your business, supports your self-actualization, supports your spiritual journey, supports. So all of those things are focused in the same direction. And they've gotten really good at pruning away all of those things that take their distraction off of their off of their goal. But Gosh. And so what it feels like is I'm working from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed. Yeah, but you're working at being the person that you want to be, which is what most people don't have. They have disaligned, spheres yeah. of their yeah. lives it was funny i was watching this uh um this podcast and mr beast was at this big retreat right that uh um one of the guys that invited him came to right and it was it basically seemed like um as they as they described it um as a, it was kind of a camp mm -hmm. camp for entrepreneurs founders and everybody was at different levels somebody a couple people maybe have been billionaires or real close <clears throat> successful in their thing right and mr mm -hmm. beast was like there and i can't remember his real name but mr beast was right right there and some people's like oh my god this guy is the um highest paid youtuber he's making i don't know 50 60 70 million dollars a year and they're kind of like you know i make a billion exactly. right but 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 in the way they saw how he worked they had their level of admiration as well like man, this guy is putting in it. And and one of the things that um I think Sam or Sean, Sean, Sam, I can't think of it. But anyway, he said Mr. Beast didn't know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like pop culture stuff. He says, you know, I, they were mentioning a show. He was like, I, I right. Who is, ain't time for that. who is that? Right. I have no idea. And then he says, Mr. Beast says, Look, I, I get up in the morning and then I just work until I basically pass out. 
exactly. And again, when you look at what, and this is the reason why, this is the reason why I said it. If you've watched Mr. Beast videos, his work is hanging out with his friends and doing cool stuff and giving people money. And like his work is other people's charity work, is other people's social community time, is other people's family time, is other people's hang out with their friends time. If Mr. Beast is hanging out with his friends playing video games, they're videotaping it and getting paid on a video. It is the whole the, what you talk about in your in your work, monetize your life, right? It is the whole concept. Everything that he He's does is it. work. He He's done it. Right. Now, now here's the thing though, that's it is that and 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 I think that in this space, what's interesting is, right? There's levels to this, right? Um, Patrick Bed David talked about this, and he's he's one of those people that talks about you got to work harder, you got to work harder, got, and and I and I push back against him in this space, right? Not if 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 I want to be four hundred million dollars, right? If I want to have a four hundred million dollar company, all the rest of that, like him, then yeah, I need to work harder to go get that. But if your goal isn't to have a four hundred million dollar or a billion dollar company, which oh by the way puts you in the top one of one percent, right? Because that's the thing. That, there's levels to this, and you can be right. I remember when I did the math and I, and I, w I was looking at small businesses. Most people don't realize that the average small business only makes $50,000 a year. 30% of they have mean, a sorry, job. right. 70% of small businesses make less than a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, when you hear that number and remember 98% of American workers work in small businesses. So let's put these things together. Only seven, only 30% of small businesses make six figures a year. So if you're trying to be a small business owner that is a six-figure business owner, understand that you're trying to be in the top 30% of businesses. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to be average. You're not trying to be any of that. But let's be clear. There's a big difference. 30% of businesses make 30000 I mean, $100,000 a year. Only 7% of small businesses make a million dollars or more a year. Interesting. So you know, if you're trying to be a seven figure business, you're trying to be top 10 percent. That's a different lifestyle than 90 percent of the other business owners in the world, in the country, rather. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. Like like and, and, and therefore you have to align your goals with the level of work that you want to put out. But there's so many people that's like, if you want to be this, you got to do this. Everybody doesn't need to make a million dollars a year to be happy. Yeah, that's why I was wondering about the happiness quotient of those that are making that 30 right hey you just gave yourself a job and the guy's like that's cool exactly i like I gotta work for nobody I like else. the boss <laughs> <laughs> right i got the and, and it's really interesting how you know they, uh, there's some math out there that says i think it was past seventy five thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. your life doesn't significantly change or your exactly. level of desire or whatever Right. Right. The and happiness that, this, quotient that, doesn't change much after seven. Yeah, you kind of go, this is what I make. Yeah. And, I, and and then I think um um you got some other people that says, Well, if you know you got five million dollars in the bank, yeah, not much is gonna, you know, fluctuate in terms of your desire. You've already bought some stuff, you got the car, exactly. you got exactly right. So to the point where the survival kind of part of your brain is like we good. You were good. Five million. Right. right? Uh, some people call that F you money. Right. We, when you got that money where you don't where you don't really care about what other people think, because nothing that they do is going to affect your standard of living. Right. I've just been thinking about it a lot, man. I, literally, I was I was shooting hoops yesterday and I'm in between, you know, working. I was I, can't remember what I was doing. But Take anyway, break, so yeah. and I was taking a break. And so I went and shot some hoops. And I was thinking, I, you know. When did it happen that you got that I got comfortable, right? And we kind of had this talk a little bit mm -hmm. in, in another way, you know? And then I started thinking about the Tiger Woodses and all the folks that are like super successful and when they started dropping off, right? Now, now, y'all don't, don't, don't fill up the comment box with the hate. Don't hate <laughs> on your boy too much. What I'm going to say next. But it was when I, when I got a family, mm -hmm. I got married. Mm -hmm. And I got unfocused, and I really I went back to it. And I, how old was I? Twenty seven. Yeah, and yeah, I thought yeah. that's when I started losing my edge, and I started thinking Tiger, you know, he wasn't shit after twenty some years, or after he got married, and mm -hmm. and I started just thinking about all these folks, man. That and I mean, I'm I'm not talking about people that got their reps in and all that kind of stuff. No, you, but you, I started thinking about that right, raw man. desire to get after it. You know, even like Mr. B, he's not married. I'm thinking all oh, these guys. I'm thinking, man. So I want to, I want to ask you this. They were I so ask you this. on 
fire. Even the music artists. And I started thinking, you know, Dr. Dre, you know, he got a family. Next thing you know, he's not putting out, you know, uh, albums and yep, all yep. this stuff. But then I thought about Mayweather. And that dude stayed ready. He yeah. stayed what it seemed like, you know, he, he Look bought at the so much stuff like he was broke. He, you know, he but he kept in shape so he never got out of shape. He stayed ready and he never lost a fight. Yeah, yeah, right. I started thinking about it. What is it that would drive me back to that level? And could I could I pull it off right now? This is what I want to ask you, though, because I I think that's an interesting and, question. Or how could I pull it off without cracking my family and the whole thing? You see, that's the that's the whole thing, right? Like the, the, and the question the, that ask, goes into that. Ask, it's a how. The how question that goes. But I think that it begs the question of why would you? Because here's the que- here's the thing I want I'm you in to build look at. mode again, right? You can see you can see the drop off in golf, in fighting, in sports, in whatever, from family to no family. But the question is, right? They were at the top of their games. They had done everything that grinding can do. They were number one. Mm-hmm. So why is it that they wanted to go get this other thing? So in other words, you're saying. Your life calls you to another thing. And it asks you to decide. And, and it's not even decide. The, 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 the key is, again, focus, hyper-focus can do a lot of things. And it can do them really quickly. It can do them really fast. But the question is, is a full life hyper-focused? Or does it utilize the ability to hyper-focus to actually gain ground in a number of different areas, right? In in, in ancient um, Chinese philosophy and Chinese thought, there, were, there was the ideas of, of the five um, pursuits or the five characteristics, right? And, 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 a, and, a, and a full human or a full person was able, was skilled in the five arts, right? They were skilled in healing. They were skilled in martial arts. They were skilled in, um, in, in, in music or art or, um, uh, uh, you know, c- calligraphy, right? They were skilled with words and then they were skilled at, um, what's the other one? Um, they were skilled, they were skilled as, as, as orators, as speakers, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole idea was to master all five of these disciplines. It wasn't enough to just be a warrior, right? It wasn't enough to just be a really awesome musician, right? It wasn't enough to just have really amazing script, it wasn't enough to just be a good orator. Yeah, you're good, but yeah, see, you're great at this. That guy's great at that. That guy's great at that. Y'all all equal because y'all all great at your individual things, right? Mm-hmm. You put Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods and Wayne Gretzky in a room, who's better? They're good at their individual thing. Right, and they suck at each other's individual thing. Right. Right? Definitely. Tiger Woods will drag Michael Jordan, even though Michael Jordan is a nice, pretty decent golfer. He will never shine a light compared to, to, to Tiger Woods and vice versa on the basketball court. And both of them, you put them on the ice and Wayne Gretzky will skate circles around. Right. So when yes. you when you do the comparison, right, there's a, it's, it's incomparable. But when you look across the five spectrums and you say, but can you do this and can you do And if you look at the people that we admire the most, it's not the person that's just at the pinnacle of their one sport. It's the guy that you that, that, that's at the pinnacle of his sport. Right. One of the things that people loved about Kobe, Kobe was at the pinnacle of his sport, but he also spoke multiple languages. He was also an artist. He was also all of his also's made Kobe different. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's intriguing in so many of these these dynamics, especially for entrepreneurs. Right. Like the whole idea is and this is where most people fall off. So a lot of the people that I coach, a lot of people that I deal with are people that are at the pinnacle. Right. They're professionals. They're doing well. They're on the rise. They're doing their thing in their in their particular skill set. But then they've added family. They've added social responsibilities. They've added other stuff that now takes their mind, that t- takes their focus off. And they're trying to figure out how to juggle it, because here's the thing. Being focused is actually easier. Because you don't have to, because you say no to everything except for one thing. Yeah, and I wonder about folks like that, Rob. I really do. I wonder if secretly they feel like me. It's probably, especially the men. Feel like you as far as? In terms of, 
Yeah, I want to get back that focus. I yeah, want to get you, back I mean, that hard her. work. I want to get back. I, I I went to this thing recently. I went up to uh startup grind here in Grand Rapids. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh, you know, uh Corey invited me to a thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm down there, man, and you know, I I, I literally did didn't think I was going to know anybody. I went because of that fact, because I would be in a new environment. Nobody, I would be forced to talk to people, the whole thing, right? Mm-hmm, forced mm-hmm. to be in an environment that I didn't, I had no certainty about, sir. None. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Went down and killed it. Why? Because, well, I saw a couple of people and then we huddled up and mm-hmm, then I just mm-hmm. went up to random people and started talking to them and was given value. Mm-hmm. Right in some of the areas where they were. Hey, why are you here? What brings you here? What do you? Uh, excuse me. What mm-hmm. are you? Uh, what are you uh, working on? Uh, and oh, you know, I'm. I'm it's, hey, thought about this and just just giving. And they're like, oh my gosh, I just didn't. And I'm not going to tell you, bro. In that instance, when you see yourself performing, if you will, moments where you go, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Mm-hmm. Right, and you get that 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 sense of clarity. Now, on mm-hmm. one hand, you got to make sure that you stay humble. I love what Gary V says to that. He says, "I'm gonna out humble you." Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Right? He says that's why I'll show up to stuff that you don't have to have all these followers. He says because I'm gonna stay humble mm-hmm. and I'm gonna out humble you. So, on one hand, you got to stay humble, but at the same time, you see yourself and all of the work that you have put in. Once again, like you said, is being able to concentrate and help that person today. Yes, yes, yes. Concentrated and, and, and helping that person. And and you said it how, was incredible, man. You, you said something though. You said, "I wonder if the guys ever feel like I do." And like you can you can study this. You can look at at the aftermath, right? Like you see professional athletes. This is one of the things that they talk about, and especially because there's a there's a, a whole bunch of. Um, there's a whole bunch of podcasts now where they're actually having these conversations. What you hear is there's a bunch yeah. of professional athletes that talk about that, that when the game is done, right? When your entire identity is 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 caught up in being this person, mm-hmm. in being a football player, a basketball player, or whatever, mm-hmm. the depression that happens when that is over, because it's over because not because you chose for it to be over, but because <laughs> you can't play it well enough hey, to be in the top cut. 1% anymore, right? Whatever. Now, here's the interesting thing. You see, though, you see that group of people who have it taken away from them, and then you see the other group of people who walk away from it, and there's a different experience. There's a different expression, right? There's a different feeling from the person that knows I'm more than this versus the person who says, this is all that I am. And I would argue, I would push, I would, I would push the question to you. When you're looking at your ability to focus, your ability to hit whatever goal, whatever the thing is, I would ask you, what how does that relate to your view of who you are right i realize for me and we've had this conversation off camera a number of different times right i realized for me that i had that that every time i chased being the top right i've been in the top 10 percent of many of the different things that i've done Mm -hmm. and in chasing that space I realized that there was a difference between me and those people that are in the top 1%, which was largely, I want to do more than just this. Mm. There's more than just this that is important to me. And I recognize the amount of effort that I'm going to have to put in, the amount of focus that I'm going to have to put in. I remember I told you my, my law school story, right? right? Now, I'm at one of the top, at the, at, the, at the time that I went to Illinois, it was 23rd, it jumped as high as 21st in the country. Um, and now it hovers around like the 30 the 30 to 40 range right as far as law schools in the country Mm -hmm. and when i was there i was like i'm gonna go prove that i'm top and i can do this i had gotten you know uh, a top eight percent score on the lsat i had done all this other type of stuff i'm I'm about to prove that that i'm smart that was my whole mindset right because i had always been smart but not getting good grades so i was like nobody else knows that i'm smart i think that i'm smart you know but um (laughs) i'll show you guys Right. And, and and once you once you get past being 16 in college, once once now you 17, 18, 19, everybody else, 17, 18, 19, like you don't have the youngest person in the room or no more. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. So I go and I start realizing I was like, I looked at all of the people who were kind of top 10 percent of our class, top one percent of our class. And I was like, most of them are single, no kids, no other responsibilities, just law school. 
right? And so they might play, you know, sports or they might do some stuff, but it's it, those are like diversionary um, mm-hmm. things yeah. for them from their main focus. That's their rest time, right? And I looked at me, I'm like, I'm married, I have a daughter. For the next three years, I can be, because I, I, I did the grind. That's how I know. I, I was with those people. I was in the library. I was doing the grind for the first half of the first semester. And I was like, I get up, my daughter is asleep. I go, I get home, my daughter is asleep. This is not how I want to spend three years of my life because I'm a father and being a father, like I don't want to look back on these three years from she was two at the time that started from two to five and be like, I missed it. Like I said, man, life makes you choose. But here's the key. And this is the this is the thing that I want you to, to this is the, the, the reason why I, I, I love that you brought up this topic, right? Life makes you choose, but most people think that it makes you choose to win or to lose. Mm. But it, but, 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 but so it's not that black process, and white, not that black and white. Right. So in this process, I realized that I didn't want to do all of that work to be there, but let's be clear. I still graduated law school with a 3.42 GPA on, um, on a scale that is, uh, there is basically, um, there's curves in every class. There's only a certain amount of a certain amount of B certain that, that are allowable in a class. Right. I still graduated with honors. I still was a TA. I still won a scholarship. I still was an editor on the business law journal. I still was a president of an organization. I still was an administrative assistant um, in the admissions office. I still was a student ambassador. I still did a ton of things in my law school career, such that I even was a dean's fellow after I graduated, right? And again, graduated with honors. So I was still in the top portion of my class, just not the top, top portion of my class, right? So I was still able to be successful by any measure at law school. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't the most successful. Mm. And again, so you when figured we're thinking out about, that, that, that's not that important. Right. And it wasn't that important because of this. Because to be the most successful, I had to give up. Oh, by the way, I also broke 80 playing golf during this period of time because I was able to put time into my golf game. Oh, by the way, I also um met and was able to 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 build friendships and relationships that still last right through this time with people that were outside of the law school because of the fact that I was able to go and do different things right and so it wasn't that it wasn't important it was that the there was diminishing marginal utility yeah that's and see that's what Sean uh Purio said uh um on the, the my first million uh podcast he says he says, on one hand, they were looking at, you know, Mr. Beast and they were going, you know, that guy doesn't have a life. He doesn't have our life. I, you know, I got all this good stuff. I got this wife and this kid and all that stuff. But then on the other hand, inside, they were like, man, but this guy is getting it done. Yeah. So it's like that, um, that push pull of deciding on, you know, I, cause I love, 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 love being focused. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. Too. Like my it's my number two state, strength and strength. I vibes. love being focused, man, and getting stuff done and, <sighs> and placing myself in situations. And it's kind of how I've designed a, a constant stream of tr- being that. In other words, going into new things, mm-hmm. you know, retiring mm-hmm. a couple of times, even though I was super duper focus. young from, yeah, forcing myself into something I don't know. But at the same time, you go, yeah, why am I doing this? I don't know this stuff. I'm not good at it. And then you're getting those frustrations, right? From mm-hmm. from why isn't this working? Because you're new. Right. But you know why you're doing it because you know what it gives you. And I think that so many people struggle with that that whole idea. And, you know, in, in Thriving in Chaos, it's the first step that I tell people about mastering your time. The first step is you have to define success. And so many people struggle because, again, they're looking at Mr. Beast and they're like, I don't want his life. But do I want his life? But I want but, what comes. But I know I don't want his life. But do I want his life? They don't know what good looks like. It, I literally went through this whole thing. I had to look that's, at it because that's right, interesting. for so many of the people, I was like, they're getting good grades because, you know, a lot of what their ego is built on means that they've got to be top of the class. They got to be all the rest of the type of stuff. But I knew what my situation was, right? I already had a job coming out of law school. I was in a five-year contract with the Marine Corps. There was no, there, it wasn't nothing that I was going to do other than the Marine Corps. And the Marine Corps standard was that I had to graduate with a 2.0. As long mm-hmm. as I graduated and passed the bar, 
my contract was still good. So I didn't have pressure from that perspective because I could get a 2.0 in my sleep, right? Like it wasn't, it wasn't one of those things. So then I had to say, okay, well, but I want to get a good job when I get out of Marine Corps. And it was like, okay, so five years from now, is anybody going to look at your GPA coming out of law school for you getting a good job? It was like, no, they're going to look at where you went to law school and what you did after you graduated. Yeah. So what have like, you done? Exactly. So again, there's no upward pressure of my GPA and my studying from any of those external situations. And so I literally got into an extra existential crisis where I'm like, what does good look like? Because good definitely doesn't look like 60 hours a week in the library. I've already tried that. I know it doesn't look good. I know what at the end I'm going to get. and I know it's not worth what I'm paying. Right. But then I was like, but I can't just do what my external pressures are because internally there's a there's an ego part of me that wants to get good grades, good enough grades to prove to myself that I can. Mm. And so it got to the point where I had to decide what good was for me. And in that space, I made that decision. I knew what graduating cum laude was. There was a there was a, <clears throat> a GPA marker that you had to meet to graduate cum laude. I had never made dean's list before. I wanted to make dean's list. Right. I had I set goals and I hit every one of those goals. But wow. and then, I was and able to hit them because I decided what good looked like. And see, that's what now think about this from a business perspective, everybody. Um, you know, what are you out there right now knowing? How are you looking at what you're doing and creating your that looks good enough? Mm hmm. Right. I mean, because, you know, this 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 is a tough industry mm -hmm. business. Is a, that's why some people get in it because they know it's tough and they love the the the, the energy and action. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, they, they love the idea that in any given situation, they could go to zero. So some people mm -hmm. kind of thrive on that, that thrill seeking part of it. Right. Um, and they get into it for that reason. Right. But if you're just going, you know, I, I just thought it was going to be easier because I'm not succeeding. The money is not coming the way it was. I, I thought I was going to have time to myself. I thought I wasn't. Now you got these customers and then you got business about to go bankrupt because of COVID or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so uh, you got to decide. You got to look at the wrong mindset of what it's going to be. And, and, and that's and what, that's why I push action, back so hard. Right? Again. Is it the action? Hey, are you doing things daily? That I'm developing a framework called um, it's called EDAP Entrepreneur Daily Action Plan, Plan. E D A P. And, and to your point, because you you say this so well, and it's something that that, that goes over most people's heads initially, because it's so profound. Profit or revenue generating activities. The question revenue is not the, the the question is not. I don't. I don't. I, I personally am of the belief. Are there some lazy people in the world? Yes. Are there some people that ain't really doing nothing in their business and they act like they doing stuff? Yes. But is that the vast majority of business owners? From all the business owners we've coached that we've worked with, I say that that answer is no, emphatically. Most of them do more work than I do. They don't make more money than I do, but they do more work than I do, right? And the 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 difference though is yeah. they're not doing. They're busy. They're not effective. Those RGAs. They're not doing things, right? Because it's all about, and, and Patrick Bed David said this, and, and he he has a book, Your Next Five Moves, and he talks about this this whole concept, right? I got to get that book, man. It's I'm, a phenomenal I'm, you know, book. Put it it's down a phenomenal here. book. Yeah. And, and one of the things he talks about in the book is like, in chess, the average chess player thinks, you know, of the move that they're on, maybe a move ahead, right? Uh, a pretty good chess player is thinking three moves ahead. A professional chess player is thinking five to 10 moves ahead. And then grandmasters in chess are thinking it's 15 to 20 moves ahead, right? But here's the key that so many people don't understand. Most people think that it's all the cerebral stuff. It's all the, I got to I gotta know everything and I got to have the plan and everything. But the key that he talked about was, it doesn't matter how good your chess strategy is if you can't execute it in the proper order. Ooh, if you do that, move 14 I remember. where you should do move three, you will lose. I read a little bit of the amateur. book. I remember that. that right? in, in, didn't he say something like, I'll win because I know the order in which, you know what, Rob, I, I can tell you, man, that right there is such a, if you guys are listening in and, you know, you, 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 we, you know we're rambling on about you know, this Take away that piece. What order are you doing what you 
are doing in. This is something that I was asking a, a group of entrepreneurs recently. I says, show me your eight hour day. And I'll tell you why you aren't getting the results you want. Because I'm, I'm I'm spinning up that, you know, your goal made idea, right? Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I have been thinking about, okay, now how am I going to be about that work, mm-hmm. right? And it might be just as, as simple as, because I'm trying to find the simplest thread that I can pull that a person says, you've helped me. That's because Simpli- I'm, your goal, I'm your goal mate. Simplicity is a sign of mastery. What is it in that day that shows you're not putting the right order of things in place to get the outcome that you want? Exactly. That right there could be the whole business. That's it. Recognizing you're out Where of order. you are and what steps are, ne- are the next steps. Helping people to find next steps is, is, is so important. But for, for the entrepreneurs that are listening, right, because we, we started this off talking about, you know, what is the – do you need to work harder? Do you need to hustle harder? Is it is it hustle hard or is it is it work smarter, not harder? Which one is the is the methodology? And the thing, you know, and, and, and again, I, I come at this not just from my business background, but from martial arts, right? For for thousands of years in Tai Chi um writings and in martial arts writings, they've talked about four pounds, I mean four ounces to deflect a thousand pounds, right? Like the whole idea of leverage, of working smarter, not harder. Gracie Jiu Jitsu is all about leverage. It's not about being the biggest, buffest, strongest, baddest dude in the gym. It's about leverage. In the Marine Corps, asymmetrical warfare. We do not do attrition warfare. We do maneuver warfare. Why do we do maneuver warfare? Because the whole idea is to put your greatest strength in a place that you can leverage better for victory. So we don't uh, we don't go to the enemy's strong points. You go and try to fight at the enemy's weak points. The mm. whole idea is when 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 time or energy is a finite resource leverage is what allows you to get asymmetrical results mm. so, so that means in, does that mean ahead. then um for example you've got um a whole bunch of stuff to do is leveraging then saying who can do that who can do this stuff can i delegate this can i uh, yes. or like you says and i've adopted i've just kind of tweaked it a little bit because I heard somebody talking about, I think I was listening to Michael Hyatt, mm-hmm. and he talked about um, eliminate. Yeah. Right. Instead of putting at the end, delegate, automate, outsource. You says always remember to eliminate. He put it at the top. He says eliminate. Exactly. Delegate. Get rid of stuff that you don't need to do. Automate. And, and, and again, eliminating is a leverage tool, right? If I have ten things on my to do list, and only six of them are actually in alignment with where I'm trying to go. If I eliminate the four that aren't in alignment with where I'm trying to go, now I have the energy. I have the energy that was going to be one tenth to each of those things to now put it right six. What is that? It'd be six out of ten, right? So, so one sixth of my energy for the day to each of those things, right? So that's ten percent versus I think a six is like eighteen percent, right? I mean, I just that public, alone. I don't just do that man. alone. Right, like, like, right. Like just that says, alone, I don't do public math. Right, just that alone, you've increased the amount of energy, the amount of time, of everything that you're able to give to each of those things, almost double, just by eliminating four things. Look at that. That it gets it circles back to the focus. I'll give you an example. So I'm up late last night, right? I think I may have gone. I may have jumped into bed at about five thirty. I even I can say I made a little pallet on the floor of my office in my in my um in ho- at home. And, but get this from about, cause I mean, I tried to go to bed, but I couldn't sleep mm. and I don't believe in insomnia. I believe you get your butt up to work. I mean, I've been, <laughs> I had been drinking coffee all day, so it's mm. not like I just mm-hmm. couldn't sleep. It was like, you know, chemically my body is going, why would I sleep? Exactly. Anyway. So, but, but Rob from, uh, um, I, I literally outsourced having a website built instead of me messing around with it. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't done anything with it in a week. Right. Just kind of like mm-hmm. working during the day in that two hours. From like three thirty to five thirty, I was literally able to do more than I had done in a week. There you go. It was the craziest thing. And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on now? Leverage. It, and all I did, I was tired. I, I wasn't going to be, you know, on 
anything social media. I wasn't going to be clicking on no YouTube channel. I wasn't going to, I just literally concentrated, learn what I need to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Leverage. Wow, it was incredible. Now, during the day when I get up and I'm temp I'm doing 80 other things. I might go, you know, you know, do this. I might go across the street, shoot some hoop. I might take a walk. I might go down the road. I might do something on YouTube. I not yeah. get nothing done. And and, and the, the biggest key but I'll spin coming all day. out of that, like the, the biggest key coming out of that to the question that you asked is, it, does that mean getting other people to do stuff? Does that mean eliminate? It means all of the above. And the key is one of the greatest leverage points that you can get and I didn't realize this. Like I read Cash Flow Quadrant. I told you this story before. I read Cash Flow Quadrant three times before this section of Cash Flow Quadrant stuck out to me and like smacked me in the head. Like them OUA, those OVA commercials where you be popping popping people on the head. Like you need a VA. <laughs> um, it, it was one of those moments where it was like there's a there's a step. Robert Kiyosaki talks about how do you become a big business owner if you want to be, become a big business owner. And literally, it's in bold. It's 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 enumerated. But for some reason, the first two times I read this, I didn't pay attention. Over it. Number one, find a mentor. A mentor is a leverage component for people because what a mentor can do, because they've been down oh, the path, man. they know the order yeah. that the steps need to go in and they can tell you, you're right here. Here's the things that you need to be thinking about. What do you want to do? Which way do you want to go? They can help you make your decision. They won't necessarily tell you what to do, but they can help you figure out what order and what steps you need to be doing next. I know Alex Ramosa is big on that. I've become even bigger on it as... As I've been working with entrepreneurs in the mentors in the mentorship space, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it, it, people are trying to become my mentors, but they want a lot of money for it, mm -hmm. right? I get it, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm resisting. I had somebody just recently say, "Hey, man, for seven grand, I'll show you this." I'm like, "Nah, you won't." Yeah, and 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 and, and I won't I won't push back against any of that. I, I'll what use I will that say, seven grand for something else, but I get it. What I will say it is, is probably true. You have I to be able to do the him. ROI. I just didn't believe him. That's the key, and and you have to be able to do the ROI. You got to look at it and say, okay, for this seven grand that I'm about to give you, what is what is the realistic expectation of what this is going to do for us? Right. One of the things that I'm big on is. Don't ever take a mentor that's going to give you, well, I don't know what it what it can do for you. If there's not somebody that's saying you can definitely double your business, triple your business, and here's the steps, here's the pathway, here's what I know I can do with you, then that's not a mentor, right? Like a mentor is somebody that's supposed to give clarity where there is uncertainty. A mentor is not somebody that's just going to be there with you being uncertain. That's not what a mentor is for. Yeah, and I got that sense because some of the stuff that he was talking about, I'm like, I, I, I said, I do that. That's a support person. Right. right. So that's I thought, like, it's like I'm those, not paying that's, you seven grand. Right. That's quarter, like those support animals support. that are there, you know, the people take on the planes with them and everything. Like it, it's it's not actually gonna fly the plane, do anything, let you know they're just there for you while you're going through this thing. That's not that's not that's not mentorship. Right. Right. Mentorship and I got is somebody point. who has walked the pathway. And because they like you can tell that they've walked the pathway, they can tell you exactly what's coming up next. They're like, hey, watch out for this, watch out for that. There's this thing over there. And they, they can see where you are and they can help you to deal with the uncertainty because they can shine a light on the stuff that you can't see. That's good. That's good. Those are the guys you pay for everybody. Exactly. Like what Rob and I talk about, right? When Rob and I are saying, do you want our help? We don't, sometimes we'll come out and says, hey, look, you know, look, click here in the description field. We'll come in and work with your business, blah, blah, blah. But on so, some levels, Rob, and I, gosh, man, I wanted to get to this. Maybe we'll have to do this on another one. Mm -hmm. um, is I was, okay, let me let me kind of back up and slow down. All right, so <laughs> on, on one hand, it's like, we're saying to you, if you hear what we're talking about, and you say, those are the guys I want to help me. We're here for you. We're going to leave mm -hmm. enough uh, in everything, every video I'll put, hey, just contact us here mm -hmm. and, you know, send, a, send us a note, send us some information if you want us to help you. But I'm, I'm kind of not selling it. I'm basically saying if right. you really want it, right. we can't sell you. Right. That's and not our it, job. Yeah, yeah, we're not. And that, we're that, not that led me sell. to this point. Let, let, me, let me kind of finish it. Oh, yeah, 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 right, yeah, so get this. Sell. So a guy's literally trying to sell me on a product. <laughs> and Rob, you know how it is when you're in marketing. Mm -hmm. You're always on the edge of, I can be sold, but you better hit the right levers. <laughs> so the guy was talking and he's he's making mistakes and I'm, and I'm, I'm literally bringing him back. Come on, man, sell me. I'm warm. <laughs> I 
like, it's crazy. <laughs> Tell me, don't say that, right? So he's talking about what he likes and how he <laughs> likes this. And, you know, n- never pointing it toward me. Hey, what mm. I think you might get value from. Mm. And I, I literally had to tell this guy, listen, there was one guy that presented something to me that was so dang good that by the end I was selling myself. <laughs> and I says, and and he's my co-host. <laughs> I says, the, and, and then I, I didn't go too much in details. Uh, but I says, the the thing that we were doing, I says, by the end, I'm saying, hey, <laughs> what about your boy? <laughs> right? And I says, that's what you want to do. And I says, and the reason, I, and I told him, I said, this is how I got out of it. Because mm. I can be sold on emotion, right? Right. And then I says, I need to take a day. <laughs> of course, they're like, oh, well, you know, you know, I says, I need to take a day. Mm-hmm. I said, it is a principle of mine now that I've created. <laughs> Because I know I'm emotional mm-hmm. and I know I can be sold that I take a day. And if I'm still if it's over a thousand it, bucks, right? Exactly. And this was going to be like, you know, it was going to be over a thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. I said, if it's over a thousand dollars, I take the day. Mm-hmm. So I said, so I take the day. He, you know, he's, he said, oh, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm not trying to this and all this kind of stuff. He said, but what if, you know, $500 down, it was going to be, you know, multi thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I says, no, I'm going to take the day. Mm-hmm. I says, now you're not pissing me off yet. <laughs> Would you keep but I will take, so he says, okay. <laughs> he says, I'll leave you two links. You can go to the one that I'll give it to you for $500 down and you can just like work with it a month and then pay the rest. So get this. After I took the day, I went and played some basketball. I get my head right. I'm like, wait a minute. I got to think. I realized that I had, get this. Two other products like that. <laughs> and then I once I stripped it down, he said, Oh, you're gonna be able to do the it was in the webinar space. Live mm-hmm. webinars, we're gonna give you the system, we're gonna just give it to you. Because mm-hmm. I had a part of it. So they're doing some follow-up calls right there. Mm-hmm. Up there mm-hmm. on the show. And he says, and you get the founder as that mentor. Mm-hmm. So that was intriguing. Because I had, uh, but you know, I'm into the game now. I had forgot mm-hmm. that I had literally Rob. I kid you not, <laughs> their product, but not in the live version. Uh, I, you know, not with all the capabilities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I had two other ones that did what their product did, and then I realized one that does it live. And that was the, <laughs> that was the main thing. Can you do this live? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As, but then so I I stripped it down. I said, so really, what I would be buying is the mentorship. Right. And I and I, I kind of deduced that I didn't really need it based on where I was in my own. That's right? the whole thing. And it wouldn't come in the form that they originally said it. Because I read, I started going mm-hmm. in. Now you're looking mm-hmm. at things to eliminate. Now this is what's exactly. happening in your businesses, y'all. And, People and are this looking is, to eliminate, looking to the, eliminate. And to that point that you're making, I think that, you know, let's do a little bit of teaching real quick because there's, there's three stages that buyers go through that y'all need to be aware of when you're doing selling, when you're doing anything as entrepreneurs. Buyers go through the stage of, I have a problem. Do I want to solve it? (laughs) Right? What are the benefits of me solving this problem versus just still living with it? This is what I like to call the, in in less brown parlance, right? This is the dog laying on the nail stage, right? (laughs) Do I want to solve it? (laughs) Right? Is it it a bad enough problem yet that I want to do something about it? That's where most people start looking for solutions. Uh-huh. Then they get to the point where they're like, OK, I do want to solve it. This is bad enough. I want a solution, but I'm still worried about all of the stuff that's out there. I don't want people gaslighting me. I want people ripping me off. I don't want people you know, taking my money and not giving me a solution. So they're looking at all the reasons why they shouldn't get a solution because it's more dangerous than staying where they are. They want to mm-hmm. move, but it's more it's still more dangerous. What did you call right? it? The three levels of. So this is the buyer's journey, right? This is the journey that buyers go on to, to before they're ready to make a decision, right? Then the third level is where they're like, yep, I know that I want to get this. I'm cool. Like, I, I think I can pick the right person to give this thing to me to make sure that I get what I'm supposed to get. Now I need to find who I'm going to buy it from. Most of us treat everybody in the market like they're at that stage where they're ready to buy and they're looking for who they're going to buy it from. But that's not 
generally where people are. As a matter of fact, statistics, have, they, they, they've done all types of studies on this. Generally, it's, it's somewhere between one and 3% of the market is at that third stage where they're like, who am I getting this from? Mm. The other 97 to 99% of the market is somewhere between the dog laying on the nail, but not bothering it enough to get up or the skeptic who's like, I'm not comfortable with making this change and, and, and doing these things. And they're, they're wondering, can you do this for me? Can I get it done? Is it going to be worth it? All of those different types of questions. So why is that important when you're, when, you're, when you're selling? The key is, just like Randy said, you don't want to be offering things to people who don't want offers, mm. right? Because now you create an emotional dynamic in the conversation where they're having to let you down gently. Mm -hmm. And that's where their focus is. It's in allowing you to save face and but making sure that they don't commit to anything that they're not ready to commit to. What you want when you're doing sales is to do the exact opposite. Right. My, one of my mentors, she used to say it this way. She said the prize never chases. Right. And what that means is. Man, I hope she's uh, she's copyrighted that. <laughs> She probably has. She writes books and does all types of stuff and, and, and runs a, a, a eight figure business. So I think she's good. I gotta look that up. <laughs> but at the end of the day, one of the things that she says is, is right. Like if you actually know you have the goods, you don't need to offer them until the person is ready. Right when the teach when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. At the end of the day, your whole job in sales is to figure out whether this person is ready to work with you. Because here and here's the rub. This is the this is the thing that took me so long to learn. And and it's crazy because you don't realize the the, the, the desperate energy that that, that that you put out before you know this. What took me so long to learn was this. I'm not sure if I want to work with you yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm I, but but because I need money, because I need sales, because I need all this stuff for my ego. I don't go about the process. Right. This is how I was when I first started. I didn't go about the process of making sure that you were the type of client that I want to work with. And a lot of that is because when we first start off, we're not certain that we can bring the type of result that we're talking about to people. But there's a there's a, there's a mastery period when you get to a point where you're like, I know that I can get this result. And once you're there, now your question is, am I finding the people who need that result and who are willing to pay for that result? Mm -hmm. And then it becomes an exploration with that person of, are you this person? Do you have these problems? Do you want this solution? Before I'm even thinking about offering you anything other than the time that I'm spending with you right now. And do you want it? And we find that out sometimes when we're um, working with people. I want it badly, need it badly, just not right now. Exactly. Something has happened, no, just not right now. And in that space, it's like, cool, hey, no, not right now. It's perfect for me. Talk to me when you're ready, right? It's one, and, it's one. I think I learned something from uh, Perry Belcher. I think it, it was. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he said that. He said one of the very first things you got to find out is when. When do they want this solution? Yep. Right. He said because if you get to the end of all of what you've done, and they hit you with that, you've done it wrong. Exactly. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I that that's I've powerful done stuff, y'all. Is I've asked because this is the you know you get to the qualification of the client part right I have literally one of the questions I'll ask people is I'm like so how important is this for you to get it done right now and if they're not ten they don't get an offer you I've watched you do this everybody <laughs> if you've never been in the room with the master right in whatever area and you just marvel at how they do what they do. If you've never been in that room, find get find somebody that is a master <laughs> at what they do and just watch the way they move. Right? Uh, I got another buddy uh, 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 named Rick, who Ricardo, who does the same thing. The guy is a master, man. And it's so smooth and so subtle. Just on the little thing. And these nuances, man, it, it, when I was learning a little bit about sales, and uh, you know, he was my agent, but he was, you know, he was so, he had been doing this for so long. Mm -hmm. From like the time he was 18 and was working at like a, a, a gym, mm -hmm. learning these little nuances, man. Mm -hmm. And he just told me, don't ever be in a room and say anything against whatever I'm talking about. <laughs> he, just don't, he says, it will be darts of death. <laughs> right. He said, I will give you the stare. And he and he talks about this, too. If you are on a team, mm -hmm. he says, 
if the team member looks and says something t- opposite of what you're talking about in the room, he says, leave that company. Mm. He said, because now they're just going to compete against you. But anyway, but that's, I watched you do this and it was brilliant. <laughs> and I learned from it. I was like, yes, I'm doing that. Mm. Right? Little nuances. Mm. Now, and I will say, I learned that from messing it up a whole bunch of times. Like, so before before anybody get, gets this idea, right? I I figured this out. And this is why, again, the whole the hustle hard mentality I don't I don't like as well, right? <laughs> because it doesn't make us as 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 circumspect as we need to be. It doesn't allow us to to to, to look back at at our misses to right to 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 really practice properly, right? I would go and offer, right? Because out of the goodness, like I'm, I'm like, yes, this will be great for you, don't you? And I'm trying to convince them that it'll be great for them. And people are, and and, and as you go more and more and more, they push back more and more and more. They're like, hey, right? It, it, the, 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 the experience was like, do you remember in Hitch when he was teaching Albert the, the 90 10 rule? Mm, mm. Right? So, the, the so, so Will Smith's in the movie Hitch. If y'all haven't seen it, go watch it. It's hilarious. But he's teaching the guy. He's 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 like the you know the 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 date whisperer. He's a he's a guy that helps oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I watched the, the day later. Remember that part. And so he's teaching them about kissing, right? He, and the whole thing is, if you go in too aggressively, then yeah, women are gonna yeah. push back. So you got to yeah. go ninety and let them come the the other ten percent, right? Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting when you look at it because that a lot of salespeople are like, Ugh! and then they they get people running away from them, right? And the, that was me. Literally, right? I had an Amway business. I had another business where we I tried to sell water uh purification. Right. I've lived this life. I've done these things and I've done it poorly <laughs> before. Right. I've I've been in that space where I'm like, don't you want to buy? 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 People are like, hey, bro, calm down. <laughs> Pump the brakes. Right. And what I learned was again, the prize doesn't chase. If you have what they want, I found out where that came from. Where did it come from? Buddy Burge, PhD, the CEO coach. I'm looking at it. this guy. Uh-huh. Looks like, you know, he's got one of those old, but he, you know, old school dudes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, green, uh, green personal development, and it says the prize never chases. And he said his was, it, it was in, and and then the, the second part of that was how to have the right, how to have the right man find you. Uh, how do I have to find it? You know, have the right man find you. The prize never chases. Never so you it. never know. She might have found that there. <laughs> but that is. He might be one of our mentors. But at the end of the day, the, the, it, it, it works everywhere. The key is if you know that what you have has value. And and somebody else said this. I was just watching it recently. They were like, the first sale is always you. You've got to sell yourself that this actually works and you've got to do whatever you need to do to make sure that it actually works. I know that I got a lot better at not selling people. Once I knew that I could get consistent results, no matter who it was that's, that came in front of me. Man, that's, you know, that's prophetic. Why? Because here's what I've been finding, right? You know, somebody is probably taking a uh, Cole Gordon's course and they says, Hey, you know, you, can you do sales? Well, sell my stuff or sell this stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he was selling the guy to me. Right. And he was selling, well, you get the guy. Mm-hmm. And I had I, I thought it almost was enough to, you know, get me out of my dollars. Mm-hmm. But the guy wasn't talking to me. It was his guy. Exactly. And he wasn't doing a great job. That's the key. Right. And and I'm telling you, Rob, I would have been sold. I would have did five hundred dollars. I would have did the whole thing. Right. And then I started looking at the website and I started understanding how he was going to deliver this. So here, you know, on one hand, you're thinking you're going to get some one-on-one. No, you get a call. Right. With one of his coaches. No, no. I said, so I asked, (laughs) am I going to get a coach? Is it going to be somebody showing up? He says, no, you get him, but you get it in a call. Right. So Probably a group call. (laughs) And I thought, uh, so now some shines off of it. Right. And that's the thing. But if they would have presented that in the beginning, that and, and and that's the thing that I feel like so many people struggle with. Right. Again, being a lawyer, this is the thing that like my mind is always trained to do is to go and be like, but what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? So many people will sh- will, will they will tell you the best version of the thing. Right. And, and, and this is the problem. If you're making your value proposition off the best version of the thing, 
you're struggling. I remember who it was that said um, um, your, the first LSU was Alan Weiss, Million Dollar Consulting, mm -hmm. right? One, one of the other things he talked about is when you're giving proposals, when you're doing stuff, you want to be in the space where you can knock this out of the park with your eyes closed because now your value proposition, they're going to get back more than you told them, which does two things. Number one, it sells you because you know that you can deliver. So you're not talking about hopes and prayers and, you know, maybe I can get there, which you which like energetically. Right. You put out into the universe when you're like, ah, I'm not really sure if I can do that. But more importantly, reputationally at the end, when you under promise, excuse me, and over deliver. It sets your client up to be a phenomenal testimonial, not just a basic testimonial, not just a oh, yeah, they were good, but uh, they said that they could do this and they exactly did this. I did that recently for, with the, uh, uh, just recently with a client and. Here's what I here's how I sold her. I says, I tell you what, I'll. She said, Well, I got some clients, you know, I work with them on this, but they're talking about this. And could you help them with that part? I says, Yeah, but long as you're in the room, mm -hmm. because that warm relationship. I said, Don't pass me to them and say, Hey, I'm he's a great guy, because I want them to be able to look at you and say, You brought me that guy. I love you even more. That's so I, you see what I mean, Rob? Yeah, and it was like yeah. I was able to um, make put her up on a pedestal. So this exactly. guy was like, oh, some and authority. I just yeah. overgave. And I told him, I says, listen, I'm going to overgive right now. So be ready. Mm -hmm. So now they're looking at her like, now they paid her. And I says, I tell you what, just just buy me some coffee. She sent me a whole bunch of coffee. <laughs> buy me some coffee. I got a link. Yeah, yeah. Coffee. And she was like, oh, my God. She says, That's it. this guy is still talking about this. And she said, and she says, can, can we do, Rob, can we do this again? I said, sure. She said, and then, then what else can we do? Yes. Yes. The That's value it. proposition. This is, and let's go back. Last thing, Jay Abraham, sell, lifetime value of a customer and understanding that so that you're willing to give away value on the front end. Like there's a lot of people that are trying to maximize value on the front end, right? Maximize the percentage of the value that they recoup on the front end. But that's because you're playing the, the short game. They're playing. We the got to get into that on another show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 because I'm hearing people said never give on the front end. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it. You, you just, uh, people are yeah. not valuing it. They're looking at it as cheap now. They're looking at, and I'm thinking, if you don't have that back end, so we'll have to go into that in the yeah, show. Yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a yeah. Good we got to wrap up on this, but but Rob, man, thank you for what you uh, you put into my soul today. Um, because, dude, I had a pallet. I know, brother. I I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm gonna pull office. you away from that 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 harder, not smarter life. Because <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, man, and y'all see how I'm using language. I'm a, I am am a. I'm gonna tell you. I know what works and it has always been in, I, I hadn't thought about it until we talked today. It really was in the focus and not in the amount of work. Amen, brother. We can stop it, right there. That's the bar. That's it. It's in the focus, not, not the, amount, the amount, of amount of work. I love it. I love it. Okay, my guy. Until you, next uh, time, enjoy, brother. Enjoy man. the rest of your day. Two business guys mastermind and we just gave it to you. <laughs> Peace, y'all.